In comes a Harvey, Illinois police officer. So I am a child of the 80s that grew up obviously loving television star cars and movie star cars. When all of this comes down, there were some great shows in the 70s and 80s, which we're lacking now. And But the 80s and the, and the 70s, the, the star car was its own character. It was its own thing. Some of them got more fan mail than the actors did. So throughout the 70s and 80s, with all these television star cars and movie star cars, it was the Blues Brothers. I mean, if anybody ever says, that always says, Bullet has the greatest car chase in the world and the Italian job or whatever it's called, or the French Connection and all these different car chases and car shows. and and But the Blues Brothers, for the amount of Dodge Monaco's and things they got away with in downtown Chicago, they had to FAA certify a Pinto to be able to fly when they dropped it. Pinto was dropped and then it hits perfectly so they could see the Sears Tower and everything in the background. And it's an, the Pinto is FAA certified. I became obsessed with the 74 Dodge Monaco known as the Bluesmobile. I not only wanted to own one, but I wanted to do everything that the Blues Brothers did in theirs. So you're asking, and this is in 2005, you know, not everybody had a cell phone in their pocket at that time, and you could kind of get away with a little bit more. But we built a true-to-life Bluesmobile, as good as we could get it, correct interior. Dan Aykroyd used it for the House of Blues grand opening in Cleveland. We had him sign it, and I live in Indianapolis, which is three and a half hours away from Chicago, where it all happened. So we were on a mission from God, and we took it up there and figured, see what we can get away with. Our main goal back then in 2005 with the Bluesmobile was to drive through the mall. And the mall is the Dixie Square Mall in Harvey, Illinois. How on God's green earth? And this if you go on deadmalls.com or a lot of the other, if, if you go on any of the abandoned websites for, for dead retail, you'll find the Dixie Square Mall. And it's not famous for anything good other than in 79, the Blues Brothers filmed in it and drove through it. And they say all the classic lines like disco pants and haircuts and the new Oldsmobiles are in this year and all these other terrific lines. I wanted to drive my Bluesmobile through the mall. So we, my friend Andy and myself, this we went out on a scout mission, but we took the car with us on a trailer, just in case everything looked good. And you always kind of choose these dates where there'll be low police activity. So we chose Super Bowl Sunday to go and attempt to get into the mall. We didn't know if it was boarded up. We don't live anywhere near it. So Harvey, Illinois is not... I'm sure, I'm sure it's a nice place. Harvey, Illinois was not the best place to be at that time. So needless to say, we pulled into the mall parking lot and there are trees that big around growing out of the asphalt. And you're, I mean, it's an abandoned mall. It was abandoned roughly in, when the Blues Brothers got there and they put all the decor up and everything. So we just walked to what would be the JC Penney's and, and it was, all the boards were off and it was basically wide open. We walked in, and of course there's glass. Now it's it's abandoned retail. The first thing they do is just vandalize it all to death. So we walked into this mall, and the Bluesmobile's out on the trailer, and I was like, man, we can do this. But what we didn't rethink of is we did bring some generators because, we, of course, we knew there was going to be no lighting in there and some lights, but it had snowed, and there's no lights, and the, the skylights were all blown out, so there was ice and snow in the mall. <laughs> So uh, the hazards of A, driving through the mall, but then it's slick and a mess and whatever else. We moved some things out of the way and uh, unloaded the trailer and put some generators. We walked down the mall and, and fired up the generators and put them in some of the storefronts and we drove through the mall. And we're talking splashing and, and, and ice and just, I've probably lost four years off of my life with the amount of asbestos that I inhaled that day. But... There we went. So we knew it could be done, and it was very quick. You know, you don't wear out your welcome when you're not in the greatest place on God's green earth to uh, drive a car through a mall. So we put it back on the trailer and went home. But so then we had this idea, if we got away with that, the sky's the limit. Let's figure out where all the Blues Brothers filming locations were because the car chase scene 
It goes through everything that you do not expect it to, for the six corners of Cortland Avenue to out of the Toys R Us and through the mall, Phil's Beach in Harvey, Illinois. They drive across the beach and, and all these uh, Route 59 and Rand Road and all these different crazy Lower Wacker Drive and these things. So I called six of my friends over the summer because the Super Bowl had already happened and say, hey, let's go and film and see if we can get away with driving the Bluesmobile everywhere the Blues Brothers did. And we're talking everywhere, including Cook County Courthouse, uh, a federal fence driving across the in front of the Picasso, and uh, it's not good. So instead of trailering up there, we drove the Bluesmobile, and then we bought a Miami County Sheriff car. Still had Sheriff and everything on the side of it, and it had a 4.7 in it, or 4.6 in it that was knocking real bad, and they were going to run it, the, the sheriffs were going to run it in the demolition derby. And it's, it's always kind of like the drag race, beat the cop or whatever else. We put a 4.7 in it, so we had a perfectly decaled up brown and tan Indiana Waffle Monster police car, and still said Sheriff on the side of it. And so we had a white Nissan Titan and the Bluesmobile, and we went and got Universal Studios decals and magnets and slapped them on the side of the Titan and then drove the sheriff car. And so we had a three or two car escort and the Bluesmobile and we drove straight to the mall. Uh, I forgot to mention that the Harvey, Illinois Police Department is in the parking lot of the Dixie Square Mall. Their helicopter pad is too. So we pull up and the mall still looks terrible and some of the big trees have been cut down and, and it's still impossible. I mean, you're driving around tree stumps and uh, I just didn't even stop. I drove straight into the mall because, and then we parked the Titan outside with the Universal Studios stickers on it and the police car next to it and it was dry. And so we moved some, they were, they were doing some demolition inside. We moved some rocks out of the way and it was on and we had a free mall no generators needed it wasn't dark and we were doing 70 miles an hour up and down and through the mall and sliding and through it and it's kicking up all this horrible stuff that we shouldn't be breathing but that's why we do this and in comes a harvey illinois police officer and everybody looks at me like i got the silver tongue like i'm going to tell this guy that uh, nothing to see here it's just us people from out of state, he's from out of the country. We're just driving around in the mall doing, and uh, we, know, we know where he came from. He came from the police department that's out in the parking lot and the helipad's sitting there. And we parked basically on the helipad. I just started talking to him. I said, yeah, we're filming for you. How long are you guys going to be here? Oh, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to get your picture taken with the car? Would you do that for me? I'll be more than happy to take your picture with the Bluesmobile in the mall that we're not supposed to be here Snap, snap, and uh, about his way he went. And we drove through the mall basically the rest of the day, back and forth and back and forth. And everybody who went with us, out of the Toys R Us, power slides, of course, some overcorrecting, hitting some walls and some weird things, but it didn't matter. And we got away with it, not just once, we got away with it twice. So then we got our hotel room and there's nothing we can't do at this point because we went across the 95th street bridge and then we're like that was a friday and it turns into a saturday so they the blues brothers during their final chase scene when all of the monacos pile up they're going down lake street and they hang a left on la salle and the only reason why we know is because at least because i wasn't from chicago or illinois at the time and there when the car slides you can see la salle street parking garage all that it says real big and so I'm like thinking, okay, if we can fly down La Lake and LaSalle, we had taken the e-brake on the Bluesmobile to where it still worked. It's your left foot and it would click, 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 but it wouldn't engage. It would fling back up. So you can spin the rear end around. It's like having an emergency brake on it. I said, if I can come down here at 60, 70 miles an hour on Lake Street underneath the L train and buzz this thing to hard left on LaSalle, if we can do this, we can get this final shot, then they drive across and then they go to a Cook County courthouse and the thing explodes and falls apart. And I'm thinking, what can we do? And it was the St. Jude's parade or something that day, that morning, where all the amazing Chicago police officers put on their dress blues and whatever else, and they're on the other side of town. And I knew we had one chance to shoot this shot. So sure as could be, we put the camera on the hood of the brown and tan Indiana sheriff car put one inside the Bluesmobile, and as fast as we could, went down Lake Street underneath the L, 
And of course, when you hit the e-brake, the rear end locks up and it spins around and it's gone. And it's the prettiest shot in the world. But then of course your back tires light up and they're squealing <laughs> underneath the L echoing down and we're gone. And there was not, and we did it at like 6 15 AM and there was not a police officer in sight because they were all marching in their parades with their white gloves. And they, they, we found them all later that day because we went to eat and, uh, there was a bus full of police officers and they're like, going, you know, nothing to see here. They wanted to get their picture taken with the blues or blues mobile. Also everything that the blues brothers did in 1979, we did it too. So every street, every from lower Wacker drive to the Schmod's house, to down the exit ramps the wrong way across Phil's Beach. The lady that owns Phil's Beach in Wakanda, Illinois, let us drive across the beach again. There was one golden window and it was that weekend and we were able to recreate everything we saw. And then we drove it home. And if you Google right now or do a search engine right now for my Bluesmobile, we sold it. And their uh, overseas karaoke is a big deal overseas. There was a Blues Brothers group two Asian fellas that needed a blues mobile for their karaoke thing. So they made me an offer. And if you search engine blues mobile in Japan or blues mobile, Tokyo, that's my blues mobile. And they now do car shows and they sit out there and song and dance and whatever else. And so my blues mobile is still alive and well in Tokyo. It's still autographed by Dan Aykroyd and Paul Schaefer because Paul Schaefer was in the blues brothers band. And uh, it lives on again and, and appears at countless Tokyo car shows or karaoke events. There is a saying where it's um, better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. And we had no permission. But at that point, you almost felt like you can do anything because we had just broken every law in the state of Illinois, lied to a police officer in basically his parking lot, saw all the other ones two days later at the parade that they were waving at and we're like nothing to see here and the, we could have got the key to the city that day but after all of the previous star car stuff in my life and now to where we are today man it's just nothing you can't do with them I mean it's like it is like having the key to the city like if you show up in a time machine at Universal they will open the doors for you like welcome like where you been if you go to Chicago to the House of Blues I saw a Casey and the Sunshine Band concert at the House of Blues in Chicago with no tickets, no anything, got an autograph just because I showed up in the Bluesmobile and drove it home with one wiper in a snowstorm back to Indianapolis. But it will get you, I don't know what you can unlock the doors with at Fort Knox with, but it's worth a try. Shrewd negotiation starts with finding the right car, and the best way to do that is with Autotempest.com. Autotempest allows you to search nationally through all the major listing sites with one search. Autotempest, all the cars, one search.